Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I hope you've all had a great morning so far worshiping together. I want to welcome you all to the south region of the Denver Church of Christ. Um, we are the Montgomerys. Yeah. Uh, my name is Alex. This is my incredible wife, Courtney. Uh, she deserves that applause. Um, but we are the Montgomerys. We have the privilege of serving the youth and family ministry here in the South region of the Denver Church. And we're honored to be able to, to share some of our thoughts today for the sermon. And um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get into that right now. We're going through a series right now. We are talking through wisdom. For the whole year of 2024, we are talking about godly wisdom. And the past few sermons, we've been focusing on wisdom through the lens of the Proverbs. We've been looking at the book of Proverbs to understand real godly wisdom. And so today, what we wanted to talk about through the Proverbs was preparing our hearts for wisdom. Uh, and I'll explain that in a bit. But before I do, I have a disclaimer for you all that I need to, I need to say this. Please trust our hearts throughout this sermon. Um, this topic that we'll be covering, it's, it's very nuanced in a lot of ways. We understand that. But please just hear out what we have to share and know that we won't be able to share all the ins and outs of every complex situation of what we're sharing today. Amen? Does that make, does that make sense? Just wanted to share that. Don't cancel me. Um, but we're talking about preparing our hearts for wisdom today. Um, God is trying to transform us all into something beautiful in this life. He's created us with the original intent that we would be his image bearers, that we would reflect his character to everyone around us. That's his intent for us. You know, last week, Frank Kim, uh, he shared an incredible message, but he had an awesome quote that really stuck with me from last week. And he said, at the end of our lives, we won't give God all the things that we did, but we'll give him who we have become. And it basically means that even though what we do matters, God cares so much more about who we are and the state of our hearts and our character. And this wisdom that we're focusing on for this year, this is a marker of one of the ways that we're growing to be more like God, to be changed and transformed into his likeness. People who are being transformed by God, people who are being transformed by God are growing in the wisdom of God. You know, growing in this wisdom, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. It requires a lot from us. It requires a certain level of humility from us. It requires some grit to persevere through certain situations that we have to be able to accept so that we can learn from those situations. But if we want to be transformed by God into people who are more and more like him, we have to prepare our hearts for that transformation process. It is not easy. And we want to appeal to you all today that if you want godly wisdom as you navigate this life, you need to have thick skin and a soft heart. You need to be resilient and not easily offended while still being compassionate and humble. And so the title of today's sermon is Thick Skin and a Soft Heart. And we want to give credit before we start uh, to a guy, his name is Ben Weatherston. He leads the church out in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, where Courtney went to college, actually. We're very close with him and his family. But we, we got a lot of this teaching from him, so we kind of have to give credit to him. I just want to do that before we, before we start teaching. Um, but the title of today's sermon is Thick Skin and a Soft Heart, because the devil wants us all to be thin-skinned and hard-hearted. But one of God's desires for us as people who are striving to be more like him is for us to be thick-skinned and soft-hearted. And so let's turn to Proverbs chapter 1. That's where we'll start. Proverbs chapter 1. We'll start from the beginning of this book that we're talking through. Proverbs chapter 1, starting in verse 1. It says this, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction and prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. 
For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and the riddles of the wise, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, it's explaining the purpose of this book of Proverbs. This is a book of wise sayings, riddles, and parables. And the purpose is to give you wisdom and instruction. It can give wisdom to the simple, and it can add to the wisdom of those who are already wise and discerning. It's a very incredible book of wisdom for us. But I really want to focus on this last line here. He says, the, beginning, the fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I always wonder, like, why do fools despise wisdom and instruction? You ever wonder that? A fool isn't just some irrational idiot who doesn't see the benefit of wisdom and instruction. I think most people would say they want to be more wise in this life. But what is it about wisdom and understanding that drives fools away? You know, growing up, I was uh, the youngest of two. It was just me and my older brother. And uh, this is actually us, if you can see it. Um, (laughs) I couldn't tell you where we were in this picture. I can probably tell you that I just finished crying because my parents made me hold his hand for this picture. (laughs) Um, But it was just me and my brother. His name is BJ. Um, And growing up, especially as a small child, I was a huge tattletale. I would tattle on my brother all the time. I would do it for sport. It was so much fun to me. Every time my brother hurt me in any way, I'd go to tell my parents and get him in trouble. And there was something about it. I don't know if any of you are young, the youngest sibling, but there's some about being the youngest sibling where there's just like a, a justice in my heart. This, this good feeling like, oh, man, yeah, this is justice right here. He's been tormenting me, and my parents are getting him in trouble right now. Oh, yeah. I was a tattletale. If my brother hurt me, I'd go tell my mom. She would go to where he was. He's getting in trouble. And I'm just standing behind my mom. I'm like, yeah, yeah, look at this. Look at this justice. Well, after years of these tattletale tendencies, my parents told me that I could no longer do this. I could no longer go and tell my brother any time that I got hurt. They told me I had to work things out with them on my own instead of bringing all my problems to my parents for them to figure my problems out. They were calling me to mature from this childish habit of tattling on my brother. And even after that, I would still, of course, I would still try to tattle on him. And so they were trying to train me. So whenever I go to tattle, they'd say, you know what, Alex, you need to go talk to your brother and figure things out on your own. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's about to torment me more. (laughs) But they left me kind of on my own, for the most part, to figure things out on how to resolve things with my brother. You know, whenever my brother hurt me in any way, like emotionally or physically, my hurt feelings were 100% valid. We got to understand that first. This, This is a childish example, but my feelings were valid. It wasn't wrong at all for me to feel those things. What my parents were trying to help me to do was with how I dealt with those hurt feelings. I was no longer at an age where they could accept that I would tattle on my brother anytime he did anything wrong. I needed to mature in this area, and so my parents gave me wisdom and instruction to be able to grow. And praise God that I matured in in this, right? (laughs) If I was never called to mature in this area, there is a chance that I would be somebody who whenever I got hurt in any way, I'd have to go tell some authority so they could figure my problems out for me. There's a chance that that would happen. If I was never challenged to mature by the wisdom that my parents gave me, I may have never matured. And this is why fools despise wisdom. Wisdom calls us to maturity. A fool won't allow wisdom to mature them. They reject wisdom because wisdom challenges them to grow. A fool cannot accept that even though their feelings of hurt, of frustration, or suffering are valid, that there still might be something they need to own and mature in themselves. A fool's thin skin would rather be self-justified or offended or comfortable than be forced to grow. They become complacent in their thin skin. 
And then they take it a step further. They convince themselves that people or situations that call them to mature are bad and should be avoided at all costs. While at the same time, God is trying to transform them through those situations. God wants us to have thick skin that is thick enough to endure the hurts that this life will bring us. Because we will experience pain and suffering in this life. God wants us to be resilient and long-suffering like he is. And he's actively trying to build those qualities within us. But a fool doesn't want to have to endure such pain at all. Let's jump down to Proverbs 1, verse 20. We'll start reading there. It says this, Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I, in turn, will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you. Then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me, since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Wisdom says to repent at my rebuke. You know, I was once told that a rebuke is a stern correction. It's sharp. It's serious. And its goal is, at the end of the day, correction. This scripture does not say to repent when I coddle you and bring something up in a way that's super comfortable and not offensive at all. (laughs) It says to repent at wisdom's rebuke. And that is when she'll pour her thoughts onto you and make her teachings known to you. Once you accept her rebuke, you know, (laughs) hey, uh uh-oh. It takes a deeply humble heart to still have humility while you're being rebuked. It takes thick skin to be able to handle a rebuke and still learn something from it. And right now, you know, I know there's lots of cases where people have been wrongly rebuked for things that are totally off base and not even true. I, I'm not talking about those kinds of situations. I'm talking about wisdom's rebuke. Because God will use wisdom to rebuke you. God will keep exposing the ways that you need to mature. Maybe you've seen that throughout your life. Maybe it's been through a recurring situation that you, maybe you've been avoiding the situation or a conversation that you very much don't want to have. Maybe God has been revealing things in your character through your marriage and you haven't been willing thus far to change or even address that part of you. Maybe he's revealing things through your job or at school that you've just been trying to avoid at this point because you do not want to have to face those situations. God can reveal these things in lots of different ways. It can be through his scripture. It can be through people just bringing things up to you themselves. It can be through relationships and conversations that you know you need to have. Or even just situations that God throws your way that almost forces you to heed his wisdom. And I want to ask you today, are you repenting at the rebuke of God? Can you even handle being rebuked? Do you care about the ways that God is trying to help you to mature? The thick-skinned person can handle the rebuke of wisdom while still remaining soft-hearted and humble to the ways that they need to mature. Testing. All right. I think I so deeply want to be a woman who has thick skin and a soft heart 
But I think I am so far from this. Like, this is a work in progress in my own heart that I, I think I'm na naturally extremely thin-skinned. And I think when I think about a time in life that is, it was really hard for me to be thick-skinned, I immediately think of high school because high school's hard, you're insecure, there's a lot of things going on, and I can remember two specific instances where I was challenged to have thicker skin. One of them being I played high school all throughout, or I played basketball all throughout high school, all four years, pretty competitively. And God bless any person that tries to coach any girls high school sports because <laughs> there's a lot of emotions going on. There's a lot of drama. It's a lot. It's, it's God bless you if you do that. Um, but I definitely am sensitive. And I, I was sensitive. I still am sensitive to this day. And I can... You guys, it's embarrassing how many times my coaches made me cry in high school. <laughs> Literally cry. Like, I'm sitting there crying because they yelled at me. Um, you know, I do really well with consistent words of affirmation. I don't do great with people screaming at my, screaming at my face. Um, and I can think, I can remember these times when my coaches would make me cry or I'm getting emotional about things. But I look back on these moments and I know that they weren't trying to be malicious. <laughs> They were trying to make me better. I needed the discipline of getting benched, of needing to run sprints if I was being lazy, of even needing to get like sternly talked to at times to grow. You know, my coaches, they saw potential in me. They saw potential in my teammates. But without having some thick skin and some resiliency, we never mature. We never get better. And I can think about another time in high school where um, I had a mentoring relationship with my teen minister, and she... She really taught me how to have thick skin. Um, I can think of a specific um, D time that we were having, and I was trying to confess some of my sin, and she literally stops me, interrupts me, and she goes, Courtney, stop trying to make your sin sound pretty. Stop presenting it as if you have all of the answers and you have it all figured out. Sometimes you need to let others say the hard things, to let others be the one to tell you the things that are way easier for you to say. And I was literally 16, just staring at her like, oh, my goodness. She put the fear of God in me. And I literally, but to this day, I remember her words, and I carry them with me. And I think that if we want to be wise and godly people, the focus needs to be on ourselves and how we as individuals need to grow. And not on our hurt, and not even on the people who are trying to point something out in our characters. Wisdom is calling out to us through God's word through our friends and our mentors, through suffering, through pain? Are we listening? I think it's really okay to feel hurt and sensitive. I feel this probably every day to some degree. <laughs> but do we stay stuck here? Do we stay fixated here? We might not always like how things are said to us, and I think this can be acknowledged and addressed. But is there any truth we can take away from these situations? Yep. Is there any wisdom in how we can grow to be more like Jesus? about a blind spot that we might have in our character. Even if we might not like the advice or input that we're giving, is there scripture to back it up? You know, I love the proverb in Proverbs 19.11 that says, a person's wisdom yields patience, and it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. I, I, I like to see my thick skin as a filter because I think we generally need to be open to hearing things from people, from each other. But thick skin, it stems from a deep security in my identity in God that allows me to hear things and then sift through what do I need to hear and internalize and then maybe what are some of the things that I just need to let go. And for me, this is why I value the trusted women in my life and men, like my husband, who I really trust their walk with God. Like those are the relationships that I want to hear, what they have to say about me and my character. And I think we all need people that we trust and that we respect to tell us these hard things. Because when it, when it comes to someone pointing something out to you, is it easy for them? <laughs> or do you, do you get defensive? Do you get insecure? Are you quick to put up the wall? You know, I think there's so much wisdom that we can give each other in this room through, our, through scripture and through our experiences. And I know for me, it's really easy to want to justify myself, but I think I'm more and more trying to understand that I will have things that I need to grow in. That, and I think that's true for all of us. We, we all fall short of the glory of God, no matter how old we are in this room. 
And we all have things in our character that are going to need to get pruned and worked on. Discipline, pain, and hearing hard things are good for us. Thick skin allows us to lean into the growing pains of wisdom instead of retreating away out of our own comfort. And there's a scripture that Alex and I, we kind of have it as like a, a motto for our little family. We use it a lot in our dating relationship, and it just says, it's in James 1, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so for me, thick skin, it's not about being tough, untouchable, or apathetic to the wisdom of the word or to people around us. But it's about enduring the hurts and the painful moments so that we can reach a deeper wisdom in our character. The only way that I can reach maturation and completion is through having grit and perseverance in the midst of the testing of my faith. You know, Jesus was the best example of someone who had thick skin and a soft heart. That's what allowed him to be mocked and accused by people all the time throughout his ministry, but still be loving towards those same people. He wasn't easily offended or ready to cancel people based on a given interaction because his mission was to love people. And so he endured certain hurts and pains throughout his ministry, throughout his life, to be able to still love people. You know, it showed how much Jesus valued having a soft heart. Um, and that's what we're going to start talking about right now. Because if Jesus valued this soft heart so much, I think we ought to as well as his disciples, as people trying to follow him. We need to be careful and alert about our hearts not becoming hard and calloused. You know, a soft-hearted person is loving and compassionate towards all people. They, hum they are humble to the wisdom of God, and they allow it to mold their hearts towards the likeness of his character. A hard-hearted person is prideful and apathetic. They're unwilling to change or be molded by the wisdom of God. They do things as they see fit, and they have a problem with anyone who challenges them. While a soft heart can be molded by God to imitate his heart, a hard heart isn't moldable at all. It solidifies itself, taking the shape of something far different than the heart of God. While a soft-hearted person is focused on love and compassion towards others around them, a hard-hearted person is focused on themselves and their own desires and their own comfort. We have to value protecting this soft heart in our relationships with God. And thick skin protects a soft heart. You know, I, I really think this idea is super interesting that thick skin is what's going to protect our soft hearts. But I think in my own life, I really do see this to be true. Because when I have thin skin and a soft heart, which is a natural default for me, it often leaves me feeling really burnt out and apathetic or to the opposite end of the spectrum of being like bitter and just overwhelmed by everything in my life. I think over time, our, our hearts naturally are gonna get hardened if they aren't protected well. Because when we are increased in our exposure to a given thing, it, it makes us numb in some regards. And there are so many studies that show this and prove this idea, um, even of the link between constant ex exposure to news and media and a society of people who are more apathetic and desensitized than ever before. And I think God knows this. Like, he knows that we need to protect our soft hearts. And I think in my own life, I desperately want a soft heart that is molded by God, his spirit, and his wisdom. And to do this, I think I need to protect my peace and protect what I'm internalizing and listening to. In Proverbs 4.23, it's a popular one that we all are familiar with to some degree. And it just says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And I know this scripture is often can be used in like the context of dating 
or having boundaries, but in the sense Solomon meant here, he's actually talking about how our hearts should be guarded and protected for wisdom, guarding it against the way of the wicked. And we know this because he says before it, he says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight and keep them within your heart. I think it's important to really take a look at ourselves and and whether we even have room in our hearts for God's wisdom. Are we too full of the news and social media and entertainment and what our friends are saying and just the busyness of life and the noise of life to even know and discern what the path of wisdom looks like in any given season of our lives? I think for me, I'm really guilty of this. I think it's so easy to want to live in a survival mode and just getting things done that I'm not even sure, like, why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, and I haven't slowed down enough to protect my heart and what God is trying to tell me. And I'm a big John Mark Comer fan. I don't know if anyone else here is, but in his really popular book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he has this quote, and he says, attention is the beginning of devotion. The mind is the portal to the soul, and what you fill your mind with will shape the trajectory of your character. In the end, Your life is no more than the sum of what you gave your attention to. That is convicting. (laughs) If this is true, then I need to figure something out. I got to start living a little differently. And so in order for our hearts to stay soft to God's wisdom, we need to protect them. And I think to shift gears a little bit, another really valuable aspect of a soft heart in my own life and what I see is, is humility. In Proverbs 15, 31 through 33, I love this scripture because it says, whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord, and humility comes before honor. We need wisdom. We need humility in order to get to this wisdom. And if this is the case, Well, because it even says that whoever heeds the life-giving correction is at home among the wise. And I really like this because if this is the case, then we can all achieve wisdom. I think that it's a common misconception that wisdom is just for people who are older, who have just kind of reached that season in their lives. Like they've attained the wisdom of being older. Um, And then I think it's also kind of an excuse that if we're young, it's it's kind of an excuse that we can make dumb decisions or do crazy things because we're young and we don't need to have wisdom. We don't need to be wise. And while I definitely think that we gain perspective and knowledge with time and age and with fully formed brains, (laughs) just because someone is older, I don't necessarily think that just means they're getting wiser. Sorry if that's a little spicy. But I think for the young people, just because you're young doesn't mean that you can't make wise decisions either. You don't have to be crazy (laughs) and make bad decisions. And I think that why this is, and and this proverb points it out, is because the path to wisdom, it's all about our hearts. It's not about our age. (laughs) Wisdom is about humility and our willingness to learn from discipline. Humility must come before honor. And I think we need to let this wisdom I need to let this wisdom and instruction that I hear move me to transformation and change. Because it doesn't, wisdom doesn't simply just happen to us. It requires a willingness to be vulnerable, to be exposed, and teachable, no matter what season of life we're in, young or old. And I, I want you, if we can all even just think of somebody in our minds right now, that this week we can ask them this question. Like, hey, what are some areas in my character or in my thinking that you see that aren't godly? What do you see in my parenting, in my dating relationship, in my marriage, in my priorities, in my friendships that maybe don't align with what you see in scripture? That's, we have to be ready to hear that because that's pretty hard. Um, And as I close, I really just want to share about my bestie, my best friend, Emily Molden. She does campus ministry in Milwaukee. We call every single Monday and she's just the greatest thing in the whole world to me. But um, I remember specifically one Monday, she calls me and immediately, like, doesn't even say hi. She just says, hey, I am a hot mess, and I need to get my life together, and I don't need you to tell me that it's okay. Courtney, I need you to call me higher right now. (laughs) And she was, I, like, started laughing, because I'm like, you're so funny. She's like, no, I'm being dead serious. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay. 
Um, but she, she had been dropping some responsibilities, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. But what I really appreciate about Emily is that she didn't want me to commiserate with her. She wanted me to help refine her. And I love that I have a best friend who, to me, embodies thick skin and a soft heart so beautifully. I think that I could genuinely show her a scripture or point something out in her character, and she would immediately hear it and listen. And why is that? I think it's because she, above all else, she's striving to be a woman of righteousness. She doesn't care how stupid she looks. She doesn't care how exposed she can feel with me at times because she deeply wants to grow in her maturity and her wisdom and to let God transform her. And so in in my pursuit of having thick skin and a soft heart, I really want to grow to be more like my best friend, to be more like how she's thick-skinned and not taking herself too seriously and yet soft-hearted towards anything that brings her closer to a woman of wisdom. You know, as we close here today, our prayer is that this church would be committed to living our lives in full submission to the wisdom of God. Our prayer is that all of us would be molded in our hearts by God through his glorious wisdom to be the light of the world that he's calling us to be. We need to prepare our hearts for this wisdom. If we want God to work through us with it, if we want God to transform us with it, we need to prepare our hearts for this wisdom. We need to value being resilient and overlooking an offense while still being loving and submitting to the things that we need to mature in. God is trying to create a good work in us, and this is necessary if we want that in our lives. We need to repent at the rebuke of wisdom with thick skin. We need to humble ourselves before our God as he molds us with his wisdom. We need to protect our soft hearts. We need to keep our hearts away from hardening and turning us into prideful fools. And we have the perfect example of this that we can look to in Jesus. He did this for his whole life. He had thick skin and he had a soft heart. And whenever we have times where we're struggling in this area, struggling to have thick skin or struggling to have a soft heart, we can look to his example of how he figured it out. Do you know, when you read the Gospels, he was followed around by religious leaders all the time who were criticizing him every single day. And he still maintained thick skin and a soft heart. He still served the people around us, around him. You know, when we commit to this, God is turning us into something beautiful. It's the coolest thing ever, how God is is literally transforming us right now. At this moment, he's transforming us to be more like him and his character. Turn to Proverbs 2. This is where we'll close. Proverbs chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says this. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. We have this promise to hold on to, church, that God will take care of the one who values his wisdom. If we do what it takes to accept his wisdom and we seek it out, he holds true success in store for us. He will guard our steps, he will be our shield when we choose to value his wisdom. So let's be this kind of people. Let's be this kind of church that when people see us, they see people who value the wisdom of God. They see people who have thick skin and a soft heart. Let's value being loving and humble and compassionate over being justified or comfortable. 
Let's commit ourselves to being a church that has thick skin and a soft heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.